Oh, great. Oh, good. Perfect. Hi, Anna here. I am going to read you a story. I went to a friend's house the other day. Her name is Miss Beth, and she is a librarian. And she loaned me some books because our library is closed because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And we can't go into stores right now, which is kind of stinky, but it's really not that bad. So I called a friend and I said, hey, Beth, you're a librarian. Can I borrow some books? And she said, sure. And she gave me a handful of books, which I can't wait to read to you. But today I'm going to read Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. We seem to be in a lot of no good, very bad days right now because we can't go to friends' houses and we can't go to grocery stores. We can't go to grocery stores. We can't go to restaurants and we can't go to parks and go down slides and play with friends. So this book made me think of, you know, right now. Let's read it. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Vjorst. Illustrated by Ray Cruz. Illustrated means all the pictures were drawn by Ray Cruz. And the dedication page says, For Robert Lesher, with love and thanks. I love dedication pages. They make me smile. Okay, I haven't read this in a while. If you have this book, go get it. I'm not going to wait. Just hit pause. Choop, and then come back when you're ready and hit play. Choop, and then we'll keep reading. But you can read along with your cup. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard by mistake. I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. <sighs> I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window too, and I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be carsick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My Kendra just walked by and she's tiptoeing up the stairs as creepily crawly as she can. Say hi, Kendra. Bye, Kendra. <laughs> At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. Invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell. It was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and that Albert Moyo was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. Well, I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. That's not very nice. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off and the cone part lands in Australia. He seems really mad. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag. And Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in a dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day.
That's what it was. After school, my mom took us all to the dentist and Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. I wonder why he thinks Australia is going to be a happy place instead of a sad place. I seem to know somebody that was in Australia recently. Maybe she can chime in on that. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot. And while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I was started crying because of the mud, Nick said I was a crybaby. <sighs> and while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and for fighting. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, I said. And no one even answered. So then we went to the drugstore to buy, oh, excuse me, some, to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with the blue stripes, and Nick chose the red ones with the white stripes, and I chose blue ones with red stripes, but then the shoe man said we were all sold out. Then they made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copy machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk. And I was careful, as could be, except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said, please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I wonder if he knocked the plant over too. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate lima beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. My marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat went to sleep with Anthony, not me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says, some days are like that. Even in Australia. Thank you for reading this book with me. I hope to see you again, even though I can't, and I hope you visit soon. Hopefully, you will.